Hi there, Timothy Linsdale, video producer, Christian, work with Boy Scouts and Kiwanis. So keep involved in the community, doing what I can do. Right now, uh, there's some stories on the homeless situation, especially in California, uh, where I see that the, uh, the numbers show that one in four America's 500,000 homeless live in California. I hope those numbers are accurate. Um, could be. The uh, UN has compared the state's growing homeless camps to the slums of Pakistan, Brazil, and Mexico. Whew, having lived near Mexico for the last nearly 40 years, uh, I can have a little understanding of what that means. That's a pretty rough accusation, and it's a land of, the, of great success and wealth, home of the free and the brave. But something recently happened... Uh, nationwide is that the Supreme Court declined to take a case uh, that that let stand a Ninth Circuit Court ruling. Uh, and they found it unconstitutional to prosecute people for sleeping on public property. Now, if, here's the if, if enough shelter or housing isn't available as an alternative. So that puts the onus, the weight, onto communities. Like and comment on my video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, that would be terrific. Thank you. Uh, so what, what do we have here? The Supreme Court says that a city cannot arrest people uh, for sleeping on the streets or in the parks uh, if housing is available or enough housing now, i don't know how broad that is how in the world they figure that out exactly uh but they, there was an option uh police can still intervene if there's criminal behavior or drug use now as far as the housing goes living in san diego is an expensive proposition uh, for anyone it, it can be difficult areas that are in high demand are going to be that way I grew up around Jackson Hole, Wyoming, a very popular place for millionaires and billionaires. Playground, very expensive, big in demand. I live in a uh, few miles from Coronado uh, in San Diego. Big prices for homes, millions and millions of dollars. It's rare earth. It's high demand. And that's what we have to deal with, especially in California, because much of the play, uh, municipal uh, areas, cities in California, are very expensive to live in. So it's an issue, an ongoing issue that we have. Now the Supreme Court's made that decision, puts the onus on cities to try to figure this out. What are they going to do? Well, we know leaders are going to immediately get uh, political uh, for the for support of their voters. You know, some are going to say, well, the homeless are just lazy bums. And uh, the other side's going to say, you heartless beasts. And uh, they go at each other, and whether they ever solve anything or not, I don't know. I just know that there's a lot of homeless people out there in Intense. So anyway, San Diego is trying something with their uh, with the sheriff's department. Uh, a few months ago, about six months ago, they came up with an idea. Uh, they're they're calling themselves the Homeless Assistant Resource Team, and right now it's just two uh, sheriff's deputies that go into the unincorporated areas of San Diego, and. It's understandable because those areas aren't as well patrolled. They're more open. There's a lot of canyons and valleys uh, for people to hide in, if you will, jungle-type environments, and they do. Uh, these organizations also get, uh, this one in particular, gets involved in cleaning up uh, abandoned encampments. But their main reason for existing is to get these people help, and that's what they're doing. They don't go in to arrest or ticket people. What they're trying to do is bring people together, different organizations that are helping people. And there are a number of them in San Diego that, and volunteers that put out a lot of time. Uh, I'm a Kiwanian. We've, we've done things to provide food for kids and Thanksgiving and many other type things. So these uh, law enforcement officers do that. They will, it says they carefully approach camps uh, to find out who's there, what's going on and uh, find out if they need help and encourage them. And uh, at the time they're in there, they're usually uh, s some type of uh, group that's in the area trying to help, and they'll encourage these homeless people to go down and talk to them 
to uh, see if they can can help them in some way. Um, there's an outreach uh, from the community saying they they needed help, and that's what's got this going. And it, uh, says we're finding uh, parks specifically in Spring Valley where lots of transient homeless people who needed help. Well, I don't think there's any question they need some kind of help. Uh, I was involved with YMCA some years ago in video production. They were at the time were working on an idea of, of uh, some type of video for support for uh, helping homeless. And uh, one of the things one of the leaders told me that happens with some homeless people, if they're out there long enough, it has a mental effect, if you will, uh, where it's hard for them to get away from it. And I know that sounds crazy and heartless, but it, it could be maybe the, the fact that you're, uh, you're, you're not res responsible for much of anything uh, other than just try to keep life and limb together. Uh, but it seems to be an issue with some people who are out there too long. Um, I read in here one rescue they made with a mother and two children who had just been out there a couple of days. And what they did is, is she didn't know what resources were available. And so these officers helped them make her make connection with the organization to get themselves back on their feet. And they were able to contact relatives uh, on the East Coast. To, uh, to get them back on their feet again, which that's, that's pretty neat. Um, they said, uh, well, they went on to say homelessness across San Diego is making a huge impact right now, and it is. We've had uh, diseases of, of odd kinds that haven't been in the United States very common in a long time showing up uh, from a lack of uh, health care and a lack of vaccinations, if you will, and in poor conditions. Uh, even the plague has showed up in spots and tuberculosis and multiple things like that. So, yes, we got to do something. And what it is, well, many organizations are saying it's got to be housing first. No matter what you do, you got to get them back into some kind of housing. Now, with the politics involved in that, it makes it pretty difficult because somebody's trying to uh, get support for their position. They're going to say one thing. And and the other one's going to say another thing. You know, we're concerned about spending money carelessly, uh, giving things away to people who may just live off that system indefinitely. But somehow we've got to get them back in housing, get them, get them back on their feet again. And that's, that's what the argument is, how are you going to do that? In California, they've discovered many times that they're spending uh, massive amounts of money per person to try to do this when you could... You could have an agency just doling out that amount of money it would put them right back in housing now. How good or bad that's going to work. Uh, I have some doubts when it comes to the government. They're really struggling doing this right. And I think it's just political. They're trying to uh, bolster their side. Um, they ran into other... These uh, uh, sheriff officers or deputies go on here and talk about people they run into. People who had had uh, their closest acquaintances die and they uh, just were so confused by it and hurt by it they just wandered off into homelessness but they were helping them get help um, some people they spoke to said the whole country's in bad shape now I, I find that kind of strange when the unemployment is so low uh, business is booming the market is booming uh, business is quite good it could be People, if they're in homelessness in those encampments, they don't get much outside information. Uh, so they probably feel homeless, helpless. Uh, why try? So these guys come along and, and making, helping them make connections with these organizations. Uh, that's kind of kind of good, I think. Uh, I think I noticed there's just two of these deputies in the county of San Diego, and we got a big county. But apparently it is a start, and I guess that shows you that they're Sheriff's Department's being prudent with their money and not flooding it with uh, a bunch of uh, officers. So, uh, uh, there, I see also they're helping a lot of the uh, homeless to get flu shots to stop the spread of that disease. Uh, one of the officers says since the program started in June, they had several encouraging success stories, including the time they helped the mother and her two children uh, make connection with the relatives. They thought, you know, they would 
they're really happy about something like that. But there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people out there that gotta gotta make that work. So anyway, they've uh, about once a month the team sets up a station at a community center where the service providers meet with homeless people. Again, bringing people together. Um, uh, hopefully the best use and stewardship of the money and service that's available to try to get people off the streets. Housing is the issue. Uh, of course, there are other issues with drug use and criminal activity that throw people into the streets and trafficking and all of that. But let's, uh, let's hope we can uh, come up with something here. So like and comment on my uh, videos, subscribe to my channel. Uh, get out there and, and see what you can do. Get involved in one of these organizations uh, and uh, make it a great day.